Now, our first guest tonight is a TV presenter, actress, sex therapist, and was once a Euro pop star. She also, uh, unusually enough, holds Boy George responsible for the conception of a baby daughter. 38-year-old Margie Clark was born in Liverpool and comes from a family of 10 children. She played a feisty chicken plucker in Letter to Brezhnev, a gutsy factory worker in Making Out, and a boxer in Blonde Fist. Margie conceived her second child at Boy George's house after a party and recently shot to the top of the ratings as the presenter of The Good Sex Guide. She says she didn't mind sharing a few of her own hot love tips. Welcome to the word, Margie. You can't stay away from this show, can you? No, but do you know where the clitoris is now? <laughs> it's all now. We've all been shown. <laughs> well, I'm glad we've got things off uh, to a flying start there, Margie. <laughs> Listen, why, why, do, why did they pick you to do the, uh, good, guide to, the good Guide well, to do, Sex? Do you reckon I looked like I'd had a lot of sex? I think that's what it was. But I said Maria Helvin looks like she's had more. <laughs> I think it was that, and also I tend to play parts of, of women who are quite sexual, have a lot of sexual energy, like Trees and Alessa de Brezhnev, Queenie and Making Out. And so I was a bit of an obvious candidate. And being a Catholic girl like yourself, Teddy. Well, I'm not a Catholic girl, am I? We well, you know what you've got in them underpants. <laughs> Shh, don't tell everyone, don't tell everyone. No, I, but I thought that in some ways because you seem a bit rough and ready coming from Liverpool that they thought, oh, well, it, well, it won't affect her, you know, if they throw her in, you know, talking well, dirty. I, like, I love strangers and I love talking to people. And I thought it was the great thing about doing the sex programme, it's completely democratic. They can't tax you for it. You know, if, if they could, they would, but they can't. It goes right across the, across the class system. You know, upper class people do it, middle class people do it, but working class people do it better. <laughs> I mean, weren't you quite sexually repressed as, like, a Catholic girl? Oh, yeah. I mean, in one way, I was, because, you know, I was brought up in the 60s, and there was some liberation going down. I was brought up in a big family. And in the other way, because it was a big family, nothing was hidden. You know, there was ten of us. So, you know, we, we all got to see each other's bits and pieces when we were really young. And watch each other on the job. Well, what was that? I said, and watch each other on the job. Maybe I shouldn't have said no, that, really. No, didn't go that far, Terence. Not like your No, house. but you were kind of inferring that. But how did you manage to get people... Because they did all sorts on your programme. You got... I mean, I, I, I thought most people would be too shy to, like, start they getting the todgers out for you and everything. The public were ready. If you'd have done that programme, say, five years ago, well, no, you wouldn't have got that response. But no. I mean, I like to say they put a Berlin wall around sex. And because it's this big wall, and especially for young people, you know, they're determined to get over it, under it, and through it because it's a basic bodily function. But I blame it on, on Oprah Winfrey in a way. Well, I well she comes over it. here with, you know, over here with her show and gets everyone, you know, like talking about sex and she's giving really all good. the secrets well, out. What she's brilliant at, as opposed to, say, someone from uh, Terry Wogan's generation, that type of interview, and a bit your style. Is when I'd they say, wait a minute, I've got style. Yeah, they are. Thank you. You're getting glued to you. When she interviews people, she brings something of herself, and that's the golden rule, that if you bring something of yourself to it. So when I was talking to people about their hang-ups, they had every reason to ask me about mine. But don't ask, please, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, I can't ask you, you already told me that. But you're also, a, I mean, this is going way back, you were actually a pop star in Europe, weren't you? I but never you never had made any many look, records. Never any luck as a singer. I made this, uh, this record, it used to call me in Liverpool Margie Demo. Because I was always making demos, never got anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I went over to France and I decided I'd be a French singing star. And I went over there and then I changed my name. I'm always messing around with my name, right? My name's Margaret Mary Bernadette. My mother thought she was having a nun. God love her. <laughs> and I, people always call me Margie and it does me edit. It just does me sweet right it. No, imagine it's Margaret, like Margaret Thatcher. Now imagine if Margaret Thatcher was called Margie. She's a never a got away with it. Have I gone off my case? You've, you've, you've gone right <laughs> off the subject, really. <laughs> I was hoping to tell us how you managed to blag advances off about six different record companies in France. Me and Jane. And do a run at a Liverpool. Well, Jane Reed taught me everything because, you know, 
he was the man who did all the Sex Pistols graphics, politicised them. And when we went over there, we were signing with different record companies and taking the money and running away because the French are soft. <laughs> and they, they hate the English, but they love the Scots. So I changed the name to Margie McGregor. Um, <laughs> you've got to, haven't you? When you well, he's let in. So we went to this publishing company and uh, we told them that we had all these songs that we wanted to publish with them. And so they said, OK, what are they? So I signed to them 500-year-old Irish folk songs, Whiskey in the Jar, <laughs> said it was mine, <laughs> Peggy Gordon, said that was mine. I haven't been back since. Uh, I bet, <laughs> and I bet you're still spending the money. Listen, you're going to stay with us tonight. We've got a few little... Well, I'm sure we could all give it a bit of advice off you tonight uh, during the course of the thing. And do you think it's true what they say about blokes' feet being Absolutely. in proportion to... Absolutely. That's one magic man there. 60 million quid in six months, I bet you wish you'd kept up your netball practice now from yeah, school. Yeah, but if you, if you can't get a job, a farmer would keep him for a shite alone, wouldn't he? That's <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. That's about Liverpool, that one, Teddy. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it went right over my head. <laughs> we, we, you know, when you, when you were doing, like, your, uh, your sex programme, that's what I'm going to call it, because it was filth, really, wasn't it? Uh, did, were you actually ever embarrassed by any of the things that people told you? Because you're supposed to be unshockable, aren't you? Well, I was embarrassed, but... For me, I had to protect the people I was talking to. And the best bit that on that sex program they cut out, and it was an interview with three lesbians. You've never seen or heard anything so hot in all your life. The cameraman owned up to wearing kinky rubber gear. The sound man, he owned up to dressing up in his wife's <laughs> underwear. You know, they brought everyone out the closet, but they cut it. And they cut it all out. I mean, when you, when you do your one-woman show, uh, you've been, you've been uh, doing quite a lot of different clubs, haven't you? Can you, can you tell us uh, what is in the Margie Clark one-woman show? Well, it's called 21st Century Scut. <laughs> and a scut isn't a slut. She's just on her way to being. <laughs> Subtle difference. It's, it's like, um, it's a bit of a variety show. I descend from the gods on something that's 20 foot, pink, and got a pair of balls on the bottom. <laughs> Do you know what it is? And is it stand-up? Yeah, it's stand-up, but it's also got a, I do a bit of singing in it, and there's dance routines. Our Frank's written the script for me, Jamie Reed's doing all the sets, Rowan Bud is bound to make an appearance. You are the name-dropper, aren't you? Listen, we've got a few big names coming up for you later on in tonight's show.